and welcome to my Xbox and me, episode 404. I am one of your hosts, MC Fixer, alongside the one and only Two Fresh Mother Trucking Crash. Crash, how are you? Hello, hello. I'm doing good. I feel like I haven't spoken to you in a really long time. I've been talking to you before the podcast. Like, I feel like I haven't spoken to you in ages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been, well, the last time we talked was the last time we did the podcast was like 10 days ago. Was it 10? We're recording a late podcast this week. Yeah. Uh, So it's been, that's a long, for us, that's a long time. Yeah. It is a long time. And we've had games come out as well and we've not even played them. You know where it is? We were meant to play Minecraft Legends and then I didn't, I didn't get back to you and then blah, 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 blah. And then I meant to have spoken to you, but I haven't. That's why. That's why. It's okay. Makes There's sense. a Dead Island 2. Have you played it yet? We'll talk about we'll it. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get okay. there, Chris. Don't, don't jump the gun. Don't jump the gun. Uh, this is my that. Xbox and me, our weekly Xbox podcast right here on uh, YouTube.com slash my Xbox and me and all podcast services. If you want the show early, head over to Patreon.com slash MC Fixer. Support the show financially. We would appreciate it. You ain't got no dollars. No big deal. We accept pounds too. Uh, if not, go subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash my Xbox and me. Uh, go give us a good review on any podcast service. We prefer Apple and Spotify, but we'll take it anywhere we can get it. Uh, shout out our Patreon producer, Erin God. And topic of the show this week Crash. Big one, big one. I saw the internet. The internet was in an interesting yeah. place. I saw a lot of articles come out about this. I saw a lot of chitter chatter out there. So uh, I thought we would tackle it on topic of the show this week. High Fire Rush reportedly failed to meet sales expectations. Microsoft unhappy with the state of Xbox. Uh, this comes from uh, a uh, Jeff Grubb. Was this a podcast or was this an article? I'm not sure. Let's read and we'll find out, shall we? Speaking during the latest episode of Game Mess Decides, uh, Jeff Grubb, who is known for his game industry insight, revealed that Hi-Fi Rush couldn't meet sales expectations and that Microsoft is unhappy with uh, the... unhappy with the Grubb. The Grubb state that Hi-Fi Rush failed to make money uh, it needed to make, despite getting positive reviews and being relatively low price. Based- I just want to point out... That's what it that says. That's not fixed. That's just... That's what it says. That's what it says. That's what it says. I read what is put in front of me, just like uh, what's his name? What's his name? Uh, The dude from uh, crap that film, Uh, the Anchorman. Anchorman. What's his name? I got no clue. You never seen Anchorman? Anchorman like half of one Anchorman. What's his name? I don't like Anchorman. I know. God damn it, I can't think of his name. I'm like that guy. You put it in front of me, that's what I'm reading. Simple as, all right? Anyway, uh, based on what he's heard, there appears to be a certain uh, sales expectations for games, despite them being on Game Pass. He added that the company may have expected bigger titles like Halo Infinite to become a source of major uh, microtransaction revenue. And since that hasn't happened thus far, smaller releases like Hi-Fi Rush are being burdened by lofty sales expectations. There was an update to this uh, that was added uh, from the Vice President of Games Marketing at Xbox, Aaron Greenberg, and he has clarified that Hi-Fi Rush is a breakout hit for the publisher and its players in all key uh, measurements uh, and expectations. According to him, the company couldn't be happier with the team at Tango Gameworks uh, delivered with the surprise release. So obviously twofold here. Obviously, I I I I I like Jeff Grubb a lot. I think he has great insight on what he says, and he's usually um, on the money with his when he speaks. It's usually on the money. You don't yeah. really hear him coming out with a bunch of ludicrous statements and them not being true. So I'm gonna run with. I love Aaron Greenberg. You all know that. Uh, I'm gonna run with Aaron Greenberg is doing his job as uh, vice president yeah. of games marketing and saying. Hey, 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 no, it was a breakout hit, guys. We're very happy. It, it, it did what it needed to, blah, 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 blah. Defending, obviously, Tango, number yeah. one. But I believe Jeff Grubb, and I believe that I, Xbox are upset. I think there's, uh, there's a lot of different levels to it. I think, for sure, both of them could actually be telling the truth. Yeah. I think, because I'm pretty sure Xbox can be upset didn't bring enough enough money but then also like hey we do like all the promo we got we do like all the eyes on it we do like the praise the game got for being as good as it was um but i think adding in like hey we were expecting revenue from halo infinite and all this stuff that didn't come through 
for sure I could see both of these statements being absolutely true. I think it's an interesting discussion that we should have around Xbox and sales expectations. Um, yeah. I think from a first party front, they're absolutely crazy if they think that anybody... They, they keep... <laughs> We've spoken about this so many times, Crash. Me, you, Matt, whoever else is on the podcast at any time. All we hear is, especially when it comes to marketing, Game Pass, Game Pass, Game Pass, Game Pass, Game Pass, Game Pass, yeah. Game Pass, Game Pass. You can't then be upset when a game doesn't sell well from a first party front when all you've done is market it as a Game Pass game. We talk about games as Game Pass yeah. games. Yeah, especially when all their marketing is Game Pass. It's literally Game Pass. They don't really market games. I can't no. think of the last time I, I guess with redfall is like they've been doing some marketing outside of game pass though yep. but normally all they generally do is game pass marketing even when you look at high on life high on life was constantly attached to game pass it was Agreed. never just a uh high on life marketing campaign yep um so when you're doing it like that and you expect like it got a lot of players but a majority of those players were probably game pass because that's what you sold it as yeah. a game pass game a reason for people to subscribe well i also think about it like this right you look at the install base when it comes to the console much lower than its competitors and then but you look at the subscription base we know the last numbers that came out were around 15 million if i'm not mistaken um so ultimately you really think people are gonna take a chance and buy a game like Hi-Fi Rush. We don't know what it is. It's from a new genre in tank. If this was a survival horror game, I'm sure it would have sold better. Tango are known for that. They're known for that genre. But a total new genre. Even us playing it, we were like, wait, wait, wait. What is this? It's a rhythm-based action adventure. What like even marketing it, we were like, what the hell is going on? Don't get me wrong. The game comes out fantastic. Um what a game we we've i've said that time and time again definitely go play it on game pass if you have it um but yeah to me it's just it's a weird thing to come out and be upset by like you can't expect to have big hitters until you start releasing like in terms of uh money wise until you start yeah. releasing games that are big hitters i think one thing that's kind of fair to say is that like previously when they've released games that have been like big uh, not even big successes necessarily but if you look at something like gears tactics when that came out it was like oh that was successful for game pass that was the narrative that went around and nobody really disagreed with that yeah right um game pass has to a degree right now plateaued in terms of subscriber base especially with the removal of the one dollar okay yeah uh subscribal uh, su subscribal subscribe subscribe oh yeah hey you i would like you to i'll give me one subscribal buck please i'll take one of those subscribal bucks um, but yeah so it, to a degree i don't think it's fully plateaued right i think there's still room for growth yeah um but they're probably not seeing as many people join game pass so that could be something they were looking at as well but i still wouldn't correlate that directly to just um, uh, um, I was gonna say high on life. Uh, what's this game? High Fi Rush. High Fi Rush. High Fi Rush. Not doing the numbers they might have wanted. Yeah, I just think it's an interesting thing to come out. Like at the end of the day, if you want a game to do, you can't. We, you cannot expect any game. I don't think you can go in with the expectations of any game that launches day one on Game Pass when you have 15 million subscribers to then sell well as well. I don't think yeah. that should be the expectation. I think it should be when the game does come out and does sell well, just be happy about it. Be like, oh, people supported it, people bought it. It, it went outside of the zeitgeist of just the hardcore gamer because it's not the hardcore gamer that's picking up Game Pass. I've said this all the time. It, it, it came outside of that circle of, of people, right? I just don't, I don't, I just don't understand being I, upset about sales for something like this. Yeah, it's also important to note, like, Jeff Grubb's statement, I'm pretty sure, is, like, specifically about Microsoft is unhappy. And, like, as much as we Shocker. talk about Microsoft and Xbox being <laughs> one, Microsoft is, to a degree, you could view it like the parent company, right? Yeah. Microsoft's the one who's looking at all the total revenue and also isn't somebody who might directly be fully in the know on how gaming works and all this type of stuff. Yeah. Um, on top of that, we already sort of mentioned it, Xbox's marketing is a little bit abysmal, right? Uh, I think there's a lot of stuff to fix, and I don't think looking at Hi-Fi Rush is as a failure is the answer to that. It's like, why didn't Hi-Fi Rush sell more, right? Did it why not why did it not sell more? 
Yeah. No, why did my my thing would be well number one stealth release. Yeah. We love stealth you, releases as hardcore gamers, but I wouldn't say the casual audience is going to love that, are they? Do you think this ruins the possibility of future stealth releases? For mm. now, at least, until they get like a big microtransaction moneymaker. Until they've got a free to play, I feel like that's where these do well. Free to play, mm. so, shooters. Like, yeah. to be honest with you, I, I like to. I know it's. A, I'll, we'll talk about it in a little bit. Uh, X Defiant about what's been in my box. I've been playing that. Um, the fact that they didn't just stealth drop that, I think it would have done so much. I feel like they're gonna lose so much energy once it's gonna be. It's gonna. Yeah, the beta is so hot right now that it should just be and the game's out um, and we'll keep fixing it. Unless it gets better. Unless it gets like drastically better, but I feel like that game's gonna have a very similar well, fate to uh, Multiverses. We'll talk more about. Yeah, it. we'll talk more about it in a little bit. But um, when something's hot, you just gotta get it going. But yeah, I no, I yeah, I'm, uh, I agree with you. I do agree with you. It, it's we probably won't see much more stealth releases. Um, going forward from Xbox for a little while. Which, to be fair, we also oh, I think last time we talked about it, we were like they don't really need to do that all the time. You kind yeah. of ruin the mystique of a self re uh stealth release if you keep doing that yeah. so i think that's kind of both a gift and a curse that this this uh this happened right yeah yeah 100 percent. i just i hope i hope at the end of the year in game of the year talk and things like that i hope that then helps drive more people to play the game we don't give a crap of themselves yeah. just more people to play the game um and i hope that xbox can understand that they have a critical hit on their hands that Xbox haven't had for an extremely long time outside of a Forza or a Flight Simulator or these very yeah. niche... I'm not saying Forza's not niche, but like those those are diff very specific genre of games, right? Action right. Adventures, I can't name the last good Xbox action adventure. L Shooter, can't right. name the last good one from Xbox, like... We've been yeah. waiting a long, long time for stuff to start coming out and being of a high quality, uh, critically. And Hi Fire Rush has that, so. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. Let's move on, Chris. Let's jump into what's been in our box. I'll go first. I finished Resident Evil 4 Remake finally. Ooh. Yes. Is it better than Resident Evil 2 Remake? No. Is that, the, is that the Resident Evil fan in you speaking? No, no, it's just or not. It's just like not. General opinion, okay. okay. Gym, number one, they're generally different games. One is okay. a survival horror game. One is a action adventure game. Okay. Um, or survival action adventure, if you really want to call it that. Resident Evil 4 is a really, really good game. I really like what they did with it. I like the changes that they made with the entire game. Tonally, I think it fits much, much better. Um than the original did um graphically beautiful uh, it's just a very 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 well designed game but we already knew this the the little changes they made just made it that much better they cut out a lot of the moments i disliked and the pacing issues and made this game flow very well very very well um it's probably my game of the year so far if i'm being honest uh probably does just eclipse um hi-fi rush for me just because i'm more of a shooter fan and i'm more of a i'm a resident evil fan number one um i like what they did with ada i love what they did with leon in terms of him being it's kind of toned down a little bit more in this in this game um he still has these very cheesy one-liners um which is to be expected it's resident evil at the end of the day um and they they improved on one character so much for me and added a few fights with him that i really really enjoyed really enjoyed which is krauser um so for those who haven't played the game you're if you've never played the original and you get to just play this one you're really going to enjoy these fights because i think they're really fun um i'm actually getting ready to run for it again on professional so Ooh, you're gonna do uh, uh not a speed run speed run but you're gonna do a speed run no 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 i have watching speed runs no i haven't i think i've uh, learned like if i do that i ruin the game for myself got it so don't i don't want to ruin i've learned with resident evil 2 like no i can't i can't ruin these games for me anymore like i need to just enjoy it for what it is you know yes, so yeah i'm not i didn't even read the notes either so i'm gonna play it for again with Haley and get her to read all the notes to me and oh the, you the, skipped the, 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 all the notes i did yeah so, i mean 
Did Resident Evil, I, I don't think I've ever asked this, did Resident Evil 2 Remake add new, like, info in those notes? There's some context it adds, yeah. Okay. There's well, some context it definitely adds. I'd, I'd imagine so. I'm sure there's a bunch of, about the villagers and about the, the Ouroboros, uh, not Ouroboros, sorry, um, about the virus and just things like that. Yeah, it's just, um, did I forget the name of the virus? Yes, Christ, I did. Um, uh, it's okay, you're thinking about the best Resident Evil game, so uh, what, no What, problem. five, yeah? Shut up. <laughs> just, this, honestly, it gives me hope for five. It gives me hope. I would I would love for them to remake Resident Evil 5. For one reason only, because a lot of the talk online is that they shouldn't remake Resident Evil 5. And I think it would just make me very happy deep down for them to remake Resident Evil 5. Number one, you have to play this game. Because it's a game of the year okay. candidate. That's number one. Okay. Number two, I, it does give me hope. It really does give me hope yeah. for Resident Evil 5 remake. It does. I don't want it yet, though. I would much rather 1 and Code Veronica first, and then 5-6, which I think would give us enough time away from 5-6 as well. If they went back mm. and did Code Veronica, that the fans want, we all want that to happen, and then they were like, okay, cool, now we're making Remake 1 in the RE engine. Yeah. You're looking at like a decade, maybe six years. Yeah. I, like, And that just adds only... more time away from Resident Evil 5. I'm good with that. The only problem with Code Veronica I see is like how many people would view Resident Evil because Code Veronica is technically a spin off, but it's not. It's not, yeah, but it technically is, yes. How many people? Would, I'm curious how many people would actually be off put. I don't care. Resident Evil Code I Veronica. think most people, I, no, no. I feel like I feel like the narrative is out there now enough. They know Got that it. Resident Evil Code Veronica is a mainline game. Most okay. people from nerds like me are like, it's a mainline <laughs> game, how dare you? Very true, very like, true. like you you wouldn't know that otherwise. So I feel like there's enough yeah. of us that have been have been shouting that on our Twitter accounts uh, with our paid for blue track marks um, saying that this game matters. So yeah, no, I think, yeah. I feel like it would still do I mean, really well. Resident Evil is also like, I feel a lot more successful now as a whole, as opposed to, I think Resident Evil before was successful off of mainly resident evil 4 not to say that the other games didn't do well but when people talked about resident evil generally was resident evil 4 because it was a lot of people's first resident evil as well agree where now i feel like the franchise as a whole holds itself up so i feel like a resident evil code veronica could stand on its own it was just i was just curious the way i look at it is like this yeah i think code veronica sold like 1.4 mm-hmm but you've got to remember, I think it did 1.4 on the Dreamcast and then about 1.5 on the PS2. Remember, this game came out on Dreamcast Crash. Wow. You know, that might have like really, <laughs> I probably heard it all. Of course lot. it would have hurt. It, it definitely yeah, would have hurt. Yeah, yeah. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have helped. It was like, it would be like releasing, it, it's like releasing Sunset Overdrive on the Xbox back then. You know, like it, yeah. it weren't going to help, was it? Let's be honest. But, um, oh, the context with that info. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the dream cost, you know, it came out in 2000 and then it came out a year later on the PS2. And then obviously now it's out on like every system. But I feel like it's one of those titles that, with a remake, I feel like people go, I heard good things about this one. I should probably play it. Yeah. And then you play it, and, and it's amazing. At the end of the day, if the game ends up being good and has Resident Evil tied to it, I feel like easy enough you get word of mouth people who are into those type of games to just jump into it. Agreed. As well. Agreed. Um, what about you, though? What have you been playing? I played the Street Fighter VI demo. Oh. Ooh, I watched yeah, the yeah, I watched yeah, a video yeah. on this. I didn't play the demo because I already played it, but I did watch um my world demo uh, the yeah. video thing on it. So, well, they had a my world demo. Did I know. I didn't know. I, bro, yeah, what, I don't yeah, need yeah. to I play it. I'm ready. I'm yeah. in. I don't need I'm to just play it. Say, when I was playing, I was like, oh, I think Fix would like this. But one ca one uh, caveat that I'm gonna mention here. Oh no. Uh, some of the dialogue, not. Nah, no voices attached to it just text that's okay okay there's gonna be I, enough cutscenes to carry me through i think so but i thought i would just mention that because i know you're very apprehensive mm -hmm. about that and sometimes that puts you off on games. i respect it but I, I do think the general format of it i could see you enjoying it and then also um a lot of the stuff they showed for it is like uh the counters and stuff like that it's like little ways to get people to learn to play yeah, the game which i think is very cool and creative it's exactly what it is it's a giant tutorial yeah it's, a gi it's one which, giant tutorial 
But I'm I'm fine with it. I'm fine with that being yeah. it. Because at the end of the day, the way they turn the story is like, oh, this new fighter. And he would be learning all this. So it makes perfect sense. And then it then allows me to maybe be able to actually fight you. Yeah. And put up an okay fight. I will say, Street Fighter is not one of the fighting games I'm good at. Okay. So... Have you got your fight stick ready? Very, very possible. What? You got your fight stick ready? I don't think ready? I'm playing this game on a fight stick. I can't do Against me. Against me, you have to, though. I'm, I'm that good. I play, you have to do a fight I'm stick. That, I'm that good. You <laughs> no, have to. I'm just generally going to... But I would be better on a controller than a fight stick. Exactly. That's why you have to use your fight stick. Yeah, you're that good. <laughs> got it. That makes sense. That makes sense. I've mm-hmm. never heard that good used in the term of, like, the negative. I'm that good. Oh, yeah. I'm turning that around. You know, I'm, 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 I'm down, it, I'm down with the kids nowadays, Chris. I'm down with the kids. What do you think of the game, I want uh, I liked it. They only had two characters. Uh, Ryu the, the, and... Ryu and... Oh, man. Luke. 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 That's it. Luke. Yeah. Uh, they were... I only played a little bit of Luke. I didn't go into playing Ryu because it was all against bots. And I, that's not how I really want to learn to play the game. Yeah. Um, but I like the feel of it. I like a lot of the mechanics they introduced. Um, the world tour mode seemed cool. I'm interested to play more of that. I don't know how much that'll get me i was just I about to say more casual player really loving that and i think that's the big thing i wonder how different that experience is going to be from me compared to you where it's like yeah. oh my god i'm learning the game yay this is fun for you You're like i've been playing fighting games my entire life why are you holding my hand so much yeah yeah so yeah, yeah. yeah. i can see that being um, uh, interesting but i will say i do think um exploring the world through that lens will be very very cool and it is a new way to sort of brown the world of um street fighter and they're still having the arcade mode where you get like character driven stories with the uh um art i guess i forget i'm thinking of a specific word and i can't put my mind to it (laughs) but you do get the more traditional uh uh, I was going to say Resident Evil. I'm all over the place today. The more traditional Street Fighter story in this as well. Also, speaking of Resident Evil, kudos to Capcom this year because I do think they're going to have a very strong year off of the back of these two games. Resident Evil 4, Resident Evil uh, Street Fighter 6. Is dropping anything else this year? It's probably a Monster Hunter coming somewhere, isn't there? Oh, um, is the Primal game... Oh, the, the yeah, 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 yeah. I've actually heard very positive things about that game. Like people who played it really enjoyed it. Sure. So I am curious to see how well that game does as well. Sure, sure, sure. It's not Dino, so Dino Crisis. Have... Who cares? It's better than Dino Crisis. You're correct. <sighs> Nobody cares about Dino Crisis. People That's not true. People That's... who say they care about Di- Cri- Dino Crisis are incorrect. No, Dino incorrect. Crisis on this new engine, on the RE engine, would be ridiculous. Incorrect. It's okay to be wrong. Who taught you that? You. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I got something out of that conversation. I'll be happy. <laughs> um, I've been playing X Defiant. Again, caviar with, obviously, I work at Ubisoft, uh, helping uh, stream for them on their U- on their Twitch channel. So take everything I say with a pinch of salt. Um, I really enjoy it. I think it's really, really, really good. It's just a... 6v6, arena shoot-off, uh, free-to-play. Everything felt really good. Obviously, we had a few we had a few issues with the serve-off. That was obviously a big problem. Um, but the moment-to-moment gameplay is so good. It reminds me of, like, Call of Duty Black Ops. That's what it looks like a lot uh, from the gameplay I've seen. Uh, yeah. Have you seen his movement tech? Have, wait, what do you mean? <laughs> People have made uh, like movement, like movement tech for this game, where you spin around the camera and jump to something of that degree. Ah, oh. it looks awful. I don't think a lot of people are doing it, but I think some people are labeling it as movement tech. Oh, okay. <laughs> and Interesting. It looks absolutely atrocious, and I hope this doesn't end up being true. Uh, and nah. people don't actually use it because it'll absolutely kill the game. Gotcha. If that is the bet, if that's the best way to play, because it isn't fun from a spectator point of view. Yeah. And I feel like a game like this, to a degree, needs to exist, um, either through YouTube oh, streams and all that stuff. Hundred percent, one hundred percent. I think I think the 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 so they had a few progression issues um, for the battle pass system um, early on, so it wasn't giving you any progression. So, but that's the whole point of a closed beta to fix these things. Yeah. Um, so I find it hilarious, obviously, when I'm streaming and everyone's like, "This is broken, this is broken, this is broken." I'm like, 
That is a close. It's not even an open beta. It's a close <laughs> beta. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, but yeah, it, honestly, it feels really, really good. Uh, time to kill is super fast, um, which is it's a good thing and a bad thing. For me, I think it's a good thing because it allows me to get kills. Yes, I'm dying a lot, but it allows me to get kills. And then every any time I get three kills in a row, I feel like I've done something amazing. You know, mm. so it, it's not calling cool airstrikes. I like the abilities that they've got for the faction. So obviously you've got um, Far Cry, you've got Division, you've got Watch Dogs, you've got oh Splinter Cell, um, and each of those have different factions which have different special abilities um, and different abilities as well. I like the wall barrier, the game modes. There's 14 different maps in it already. 14 different maps, five different game modes. Um, I love Escort, which is pretty much a ripoff of um, Overwatch. Is their mess oh, there? Oh, their, okay. What's their so one you, called? You... Convoy or something, uh, isn't it? No, in Overwatch. Wow, I am horrible. I don't remember what it's called. I don't remember I what it's called. It's Escort. It might be Escort as <laughs> well. Yeah, but like I'll be honest, that's my favorite game mode because it allows me to feel like I'm always doing something for my team. Got it. Always. Obviously, all the modes I'm fun I like to be honest with you because they're mainly they feel very team based. The modes it's either get on okay. the point, it's either da, da, da. obviously I'm I'm streaming it in front of like three thousand people and everyone's laughing at me because I'm like on the point constantly and not trying to get ten thousand kills and I'm like guys, this is how I play. I'm, I'm a team player. I, bro, I clutched up like four or five matches of me literally last minute threw down a wall, jumped in front of it, got five points, we won. You know, like, and those are the epic moments for me because I play for the W. I don't play for the KD. Yeah. Um, but yeah, X are fine. Did you not get to play it, I assume? No, I did not. So good. I wasn't... I don't know how interested I'm, I am in playing this game as a beta until it's fully out. Yeah. I feel like if I play this game in beta, when it comes out, I'm totally, like, tuned out. Don't care about it. I feel like the progression is going to be there for me of, like... Because you're leveling up your guns, you're unlocking new attachments and things like that. But it's very, very basic, but in the best way possible. It reminds me of old school COD, where it's like, yeah. I'm not having to do like 10,000 things. Like, I'm just able to just play the game, level up the guns, figure out what I want, and then boom, keep it moving. I think that's probably for the best, because honestly, this is the most I've seen people talk about a game like this in a very long time right it's that time of year for cod if we're being honest there's always yeah. something that comes out that's this is the cod killer i will say maybe because i'm on tiktok a little bit more than i should be i'm seeing a lot of tiktoks around this it's like I, cod killer cod oh, killer cod killer and it's not a cod killer i want to make that very clear like in my no, opinion not a cod but, killer but a great alternative because we used to have battlefield cod and battlefield's yeah. kind of fallen off a cliff for a little while I think it will keep a lot of people's attentions. I could see a pro scene happening with it. Like mm. Ubisoft may actually have themselves a game that people are interested in playing competitively, which is great for them. Um, yeah. Even though competitive gaming right now is kind of in the bin. Um, but yeah, it's 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 interesting. Awesome. It's interesting. It's a, I really enjoyed my time with it. I probably played about ten hours of the bail. Okay. That's a yeah. I did two. I did two three-hour streams for UB, and then I played the rest of that time on my own. On my own time, so yeah. So you're looking forward to this getting released when it soon. comes out? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I just need, bro. I just need something to break up some of my other games. I don't have a shooter right now that I can go right. to. Like Call of Duty right now is in a very interesting space. Warzone Two. I'm just like, mm, I'm I've good. Heard, I will say I've heard decent stuff about like the ranked mode. Yeah, but the play it's just so hard. Very true. That's the good thing about I mean, this game as well. Ranked. But does is this game gonna have a rank mode on release? Uh, I, no, I'm not like bro. I ain't saying nothing. I don't know. Far knows. I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, I think there is a rank mode. I think there is a rank mode, but I don't know. I don't know anything. So again, as a, I say, the same thing I tell people in chat, Crash. They don't tell me nothing. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me I was, nothing. I wasn't was asking you to reveal anything. <laughs> no, I know, I know. No, yeah, no, I don't know, um, I don't know. Because I, I'm curious after the honeymoon phase with that game, when everybody's going to be on it and people yeah. start dropping off, mm -hmm. how the difficulty starts spiking for yeah. the less 
skilled players in that game. Mm -hmm. Agree. Um, Because I think that's how we'll see how long people will actually stay once the first wave of people drop, how long it takes that second wave to drop or if they stick with the game. Why was Warzone so good during COVID, Crush? Because people needed a game to play. Not even just that. There were so many people playing it that the skill base was up, down, up, down. One match you were playing against bots, next match you're playing against fucking pros. Like, that was the it's, that was the fun of it as well. It was like early Fortnite. Yeah. Early Fortnite when people didn't know what they were doing was incredibly fun until people yeah. learned how to build. And it's like, I can't build for jack shit. Yep. So I'll get up to like the top 10 teams and then I'm up against nine teams that can build and I'm just screwed, right? Yeah. Uh, so it is kind of like that. Uh, but I think it being a fast paced game, you not doing as well won't be as impactful because you get back into back the in. action super fast. Yeah. Uh, so I do think that you can have a larger skill back, uh, skill gap in a game like this. Honestly, I know we we shouldn't say this. I'd love a battle royale in this. Would it you? won't happen, but I don't think it should happen either. By the way, but I would love it. Gotcha. Yeah, because I, I just want to jump into a new BR. I haven't played a BR in a while now. Where I'm like, in from the dump jump, you know, I'm waiting for something new. And the yeah. movement isn't slidey but, slidey yeah. and it isn't the, 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 I, just, yeah. I think it would be cool. But especially with the abilities as well, if they could work a way out of doing that stuff as well, could be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Don't think they'll do it. Don't think they should do it technically, but I would like it. I'll be honest. I think BRs are over with for the time being if you're not an established BR. Yeah. I think there'll be come a time once BR is a little bit out of the limelight and new BR will come out and people will be like, oh, wow, this is really cool. I want to play this, and it'll get buzz again. But I think for the time being, sort of like how the traditional multiplayer experience that we would view sort of went away for a while. I think that's happening with the BRs as well, yeah. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Um, what else have I played? Mm, a little game called Dead Island 2, but I haven't played it, sorry. Uh, it. No, I do have it. I planned on playing it, but I got uh, sidetracked with GTA Roleplay. Um, but yeah, Shocker. I have it. Oh, whatever. I beat games. Don't try. I've been beating games. I'm doing Shocker. fine. I have a great cool. balance. I have here's, a great work-life balance now. Here's Stop what it. I will tell you, Fix. I will never let, let you outlive it whenever you tell me you got distracted by GTA. You can beat more games than me this year, and you probably will, I'm going to be honest with you, and I absolutely will not let you outlive it. I'll be starting it's it. The reason I wait yeah. is because I'm playing it with H. I think me and Haley are going to play it. Um, and then we had the whole. I was looking up if we can do crossplay. The game doesn't have crossplay, so it's like okay. Well, she's not a PC gamer, but yeah, she's not a PC gamer, so I had to download it on a laptop. She couldn't figure out Epic account password, so we had to sort that out. And but you know when you put like ten different barriers in front of someone, and then by the time it gets to actually playing the game, like should we just watch a film? That's what yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. That's what happened. So yeah, I'll start. I, I will start it this week though, so uh, I'll be able to talk about it next week on the pod. And the way I'm they did little... codes was very weird. Like, really? the American content creators already had it, but they couldn't speak about it. And press had it, and they had already reviewed it. And then we didn't even get codes over here in the UK till the day it came out. And it was a yeah, whole I, thing. It was a whole that thing. Was, that was very weird, because I saw a lot of people getting access to it. They right sent me the press it, package yeah. before no they sent me the game. That's interesting. I will say, little... I, I will say, this is not, this is just, the sliders are fire. You know, I've been wearing those. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just putting that out there. The sliders, they be fire. Take your photos now. You know, there it's still, it's, 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 yeah, there. so, um, yeah, but I'm, I am looking I, forward to playing it. I've heard very mixed things. Very I, mixed things. Interesting. I feel like almost everything I've heard for the most part is positive. Specifically around the gore in the game. I think the gore system, a lot of people are very, very high on for the game. I, I've heard it feels kind of like a a game built 10 years ago, you know? Mm. Which is which is not a great thing. But again, I will reserve judgment until I played it. Yeah. So that's interesting, because I could see that being a negative thing, or if you really like the original Dead Island, a not negative thing and a very positive thing. What I found funny is people were talking about Dead Island... And they were talking about um, how much they enjoyed Dead Island, blah, 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 blah. But then they were talking about Riptide and not the original game. And I was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hey, you guys, what about the original? They're like, well, that is the original. I'm like, no, it wasn't. 
what are you guys up to so um yeah i am looking forward to playing you plan it or you not plan it i don't know yet i'm kind of iffy on it i know i need to know people that are playing it before i play it because i know it's we can play it together you can play with Haley. you guys have to find but i can play play separately with Haley. i can play with you and then play with Haley. Hmm. will you actually make time to play games with me folks all you gotta do is hit me up. You've not once hit me up ever and been like, can we play this? And I've gone, no. All right, guys, I gotta go. That's it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, that's it. That's the end of my Xbox and me. I appreciate yeah. you guys. Goodbye. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, let's yeah, jump yeah. into this week's dashboard before we uh, get out of here, shall we? Uh, Sega confirms um, its initial intention. Intention. Uh, in- intention. Yeah, I was getting there. Uh, to purchase the Angry Birds developer. Roviro? How the hell did you say that? Rovio? Is that is that Rovio? Never heard of him. I think so. Generally, I never knew who'd own this company. I saw this all come out, and I was like, the, my biggest takeaway from this crash was, oh, Xbox is not buying Sega. Uh, Sega has confirmed it, Sega. it is set to purchase Angry Birds of Valor par Rovio uh, for seven hundred and seventy-five million, following reports of a potential deal earlier in April. Crash? Why? I've seen a lot of people saying movie stuff with oh, Angry Birds. Okay. But I got no clue. I wonder how much money Angry Birds makes. I mean, clearly a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, <laughs> that's a lot of money to drop. For I, I know they make other games, but to essentially drop for one franchise. Because I think the main franchise everybody knows them for is Angry Birds. They got ang ang yeah. I'm just I'm looking at their games now, and I just saw uh, Angry Birds, Angry Birds Two, Bad Piggies, Angry Birds Star Wars. Um, it's a lot of Angry Birds based stuff. Yeah, ang oh my god, bro, it's way more than you'd think. Is it all Angry Birds stuff? Bro, not all, but like I'm just okay. Generally, I just looked on their wiki, right? Angry Birds, Angry Birds Light, Angry Birds uh, Free. Angry Birds, oh, okay, they've got like a Chinese version, a Rio version, Angry Birds Free with Magic, Angry Birds Trilogy, Angry Birds Chrome, like, what the, Angry Birds Cheetos, Angry Birds Cheetos 2. Yeah, that's crazy. Angry Birds Space HD. There you go. Which, that's not, but that's worth, do you know what, why am I, it's mobile games, of course it is. It's, it's a whole place I don't know. I don't even know what that's yeah. all about, so I don't know why I'm talking. I also 100% could see like some sort of movie with how successful the Sonic movies have been for Sega, for that playing a part in it of like, oh, we can also make movies off this and get some other merchandising and all sorts of stuff like that as well. Um, but yeah, I think it's 100% Sega's not being bought anytime soon. And I don't think that's necessarily a negative, especially because oh. Sega's been playing very well with Xbox, that I don't think there would be a need for Xbox to necessarily buy Sega. I think the big test um, has been the Persona 3 remake rumors, and I think there was a leak sometime recently or something like that. Um, if that comes to Xbox day one, I think that'll be a very big sign with how Sega's relationship exactly is with Xbox in connection to a lot of their jrpg games yeah i mean just 775 million crash it's a lot of money it's a lot of money angry birds it's a lot of money for angry birds birds. angry birds birds. Birds. a lot of angry birds i wonder how the birds are feeling about this deal probably a little angry hey this is why you're my co-host crash uh (laughs) moving on former bungie director uh joseph stetton uh reveals his next studio his name I got it wrong. Joseph Staten. Joseph Staten. St- eight. That, that makes sense. Joseph Staten. You said Staten, so I went with it. Uh, Joseph Staten, uh, one of the original architects on Halo, who became in who came in late in Halo Infinite's development process to help land the very important plan uh, for Microsoft, has joined Netflix as a creative director of Netflix Games. He is building a brand new AAA multi-platform game and original and original IP. Crash. Yep. What's Netflix doing? What are they up to? They're doing Sank. They're up to Sank. I don't like it. I don't like it, Crash. I'm not a yeah, fan. They're doing gaming stuff. Yeah. And they're keeping Xbox out of the loop on the gaming stuff. 
So, for if you don't know what Crash is referencing, Oxen Free 2 is on everything, including Netflix, other than Xbox. To be fair, Netflix owns Oxen Free, or the studio that makes it. Yeah, no, I understand that. Yeah, no, no, I'm just, I'm just clarifying that because I did see some people like very confused why it wasn't, why it was coming to Netflix at least online, and like it makes sense why it's coming to Netflix. I was gonna, that's the only place it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> It, the, well, the, it may, I think it makes it makes sense when you look at what Netflix is probably viewing as their competition. It's cloud. It's X Cloud. Oh, uh, yeah. that's a great point. I never Game thought Pass. of that. That's a great point. So whatever Joseph Staten's working on at Netflix, probably not gonna come to Xbox. Huh. And I, if um, if PlayStation gets into streaming, I'd assume you stop seeing stuff over on PlayStation as well. Which we know they are, because they've got that rumored handheld coming out. And Yeah, I, I'd assume they are getting to it. I think if you're future-minded, like you have to be like at least working towards it in some capacity in the future. Mm. Um, so I, I do for sure think they're going into it a lot harder than they have in the past. But, Interesting. Yeah. Huh. I didn't yeah. think of it like that. That's a great way of thinking of it. It's yeah, a shame. Sure, it's, I've, I've seen a lot of people mentioning that. That's not an original. No, I know, me. but I had I hadn't thought about it. Um, yeah. It's a shame because I really liked After Party. That was a. I, did, mm. I never played Oxen Free, so I know people love Oxen Free, but that's not the, yeah. the the game that I love from um oh Night School Night School Studio. I think that's the name. Um. But Oxen Free 2, obviously people, it's a sequel. Obviously people get very passionate when sequels don't come to the places they played it in the first place. Um, yeah. But yeah, if you want to play it and you don't own uh, a PlayStation or a PC or a Switch, I, you'll be I, playing it on Netflix. Do you know what? Now I think about this, as much as I don't like it, it makes perfect sense why it's yeah. not on Xbox. Yeah. I, I don't I like there it. there is a, a question in the larger scheme of like, is Xbox approaching these people to get these games on their platform? Because there's been a number of games that I've missed. And this one out of everything that's come out probably is the most where it's like Xbox could have approached and I don't think anything Xbox could have offered short of covering the full marketing, like the full budget of the game um, would have done it. And I don't even know if that would do it. I mean, that'd probably do it, but still. Hmm. Mm, I've got a lot of fools crash. But, me with some thoughts. No, I just I think you've blown my it may it it makes sense. But you're right, they must view Xbox as bigger competitions in the streaming space, which is ultimately what Netflix is making a play for. Yeah. In a in a big way, because that's their only competitor is is Game Pass, really, and um uh X Clad. Huh. Yeah. 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 I, I, they're clearly I, like, yeah. With Joseph Staten and this news about him, they're clearly very interested in attempting to go into that market as well. Um, so I don't think this is a move of sort of like Sony paying or anything like that that people constantly talk about. I think this is very much so 100% a Netflix centered move. Yeah. Best way to bolster their audience and get people to play. It meant, uh, to be fair, from a business perspective, it makes perfect sense. Take a franchise that people love. That I think it would make more sense if it wasn't coming to PlayStation. I think this argument would make more sense that I'm about to say. Take a franchise that people love, put the sequel on a platform that doesn't have a player base yet and they're building, yeah. and force all the, funnel all those people into Netflix. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. It's available on PlayStation. I wonder. I wonder how it'll be available on a larger scale and if you can still play it. Like, it's not officially releasing on Xbox, but I wonder if they have plans to make it so you can stream games through the Netflix app and if Xbox would ever allow that on an Xbox platform. Oh, interesting. So the Netflix yeah. app on Xbox, you hit the game tab and then you play the game via yeah. your Xbox it's on Netflix. It's still free there. <laughs> But you can't, like, get it in a traditional sense on Xbox, so it's not releasing on Xbox, right? Huh. I think yeah. that's kind of, that gets into, like, a really messy territory. Super messy, but I like it. Okay with it. I like it. You think Netflix could force Xbox's hand by saying, like, okay, you don't want it like that? 
cool. There's no more Netflix app on Xbox at all. I think once upon a time they're mad. Now we've all got smart TVs. No, no one cares. Yeah. Once upon a time, you used to go on your Xbox to watch TV. Like, just That's like true. back in the day, you bought a PS2 to use the DVD player. Now yep. it's built into your TV. Most people either have a smart TV or have an Amazon Fire Stick or something like that. Yeah. Even when I go into my friends' list, you used to, used to, back in the day on the 360, oh my God. Like, no wonder why the Xbox One turned out where it was, but it was like Netflix, 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 Netflix. Yeah. That's all it was. So, mad. Moving on, though. Speaking of changes coming to the Xbox, uh, thanks to Twitter, changes, uh, you can say goodbye to the Xbox DVR feature. Uh, recently, Twitter started uh, charging a starting fee of $42,000 for companies to access the API features. Uh, as such, you've got a lot of companies that have pulled out, um, Xbox being Microsoft being one of them. Uh, they've pulled it out from the Windows 11 and obviously consoles directly. Twitter's in the bin right now, bro. I know I still, I know I'm paying my schmuck $8 a month for my Twitter blue because yeah. I'm a schmuck, but. Twitter's in the bin right now, bro. Do you know what? I saw the perfect example of it. Someone's we're talking about LeBron James not paying for the Twitter blue, right? Yeah. And, it, and they said it like this. Imagine asking LeBron James to use your platform for free and then expecting him to pay $8. And then I apply that to everybody and I go, huh, you're so right. All of these huge influencers with huge audiences that create so much traffic for your website and you just go, nah, you're going to pay us. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, but it's all in the name of free speech. I have seen people clanning people for paying for Twitter Blue. Those people can suck my dick, if I'm being honest. You know, I feel personally attacked. So that's how I feel. You're one of those people, right? I don't attack anybody, but I don't. I, I'm not mad at anybody attacking anybody. <laughs> so American of you. <laughs> so nah, I'm fucking around. I'm fucking around. But, look, but I'm not doing it as a status symbol. No, I get it. I'm doing I, it I, for I, a I number of different reasons. It's not because I need the blue check knight next to my name. I don't need to be able to edit tweets. I get it. A hundred percent. All your reasoning super valid. You're still playing paying for Twitter blue. You know. I'm blocked. I what you're Look, I'm not. I'm not. I'm mad blocked. At you, but I would never tell you not to do it or anything like that, right? I think what you do with your money, uh, your choice, right? Mm. It's the same way when I buy skins and games. You look at me. And you're oh, like, I look at you like you're crazy. Idiot. Yes, that's true. Exactly. That's true. Exactly. I do. I do. I do. I can. I respect that. Same exact thing. Okay. But but but, I write mine off on a tax bill. You don't. I could. <laughs> Technically, yeah. Uh, <laughs> moving on, Ubisoft Plus is available now on Xbox consoles. Uh, Ubisoft Plus is available on all Xbox pl- uh, consoles now. Ubisoft Plus is, uh, I guess it's not, again, I work for Ubisoft, this is not an ad. Uh, it grants you access to all Ubisoft titles, including major DLCs and expansions. Uh, it launched back in January 2022 on PC. It was announced. Oh yeah, okay. I don't know. Um, I think it was, it was January. That it's coming to Xbox in January 2022. I have no clue. Oh, I don't remember. Anyway, this is a big deal. I know it doesn't seem like it's a big deal, but for people who enjoy Ubisoft games and not Game Pass as a whole, this is a big deal. Yeah, I mean, even for people who enjoy Game Pass, a game comes out on Ubisoft Plus that you want to play. You get it for a month instead of having to pay the full sixty dollar price or whatever. Yeah, and then that's the problem. Most people are not going to do that. Yeah, but that's how you get people in the door. Yeah, you know, that's yeah, always, yeah, yeah. It's always a valid argument because that's what gets people in the yeah. door. I mean, I don't have this this at this moment in time, but I've obviously used the service for work, um, and I'm always surprised by how good it is, especially when it comes to like the DLCs and uh, expansions, and like I got all the gear in Assassin's Creed, which I wanted. But it was already there because I had Ubisoft Plus. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's it is a it's a good system if you enjoy Ubisoft games. Obviously, I was gonna say like with the amount of content and DLC that Ubisoft generally releases for their game, I could see people having this year round and being very satisfied. Especially when you're looking at something like Assassin's Creed Valhalla and all the DLC that's oh, got. Oh yeah, in. oh that got so much. I knew people who played Odyssey for like a year plus. Mm-hmm. So to see Valhalla already being a game that was that big 
or maybe bigger. I don't remember how big it was on release, but also get all that content. Yeah. Like you could have that for like two years mm -hmm. and still be playing it through Ubisoft Plus, right? Yeah, on I think top of all the other stuff that come out. I think the only problem I have with this Ubisoft Plus stuff, again, I ultimately I like the system. I think they've got to start releasing more games if you're really gonna get everything out of it. Is the one thing I worry about. I. I'm going to disagree with that only because this is a very hyper focused thing. It's not like Game Pass because not. Game Pass isn't marketed as only an Xbox thing. It is all these games available, right? Yeah. A very general statement. With Ubisoft, it is these are Ubisoft games. And if Ubisoft starts releasing more games, we've seen Ubisoft trying to release more games. What ends up happening with all their free to play releases and stuff like that, you end up diluting the branding of Ubisoft, right? Yeah, I mean, this doesn't really help with free to play games, but I get what you're saying. I do yeah. get what you're saying. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Where do we go from here? We're running out of time, Chris. We're running out of time. Uh, we'll do this one quickly Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League officially delayed to 2024. Um, an article came out on Windows Central. I think it was announced on Twitter, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so. But yeah, they need more time, pretty much. Um, and honestly, no, I'm shocked. okay with it. I'm okay with it. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, Ubisoft had a bunch of Division news come out. There was a bunch of stuff come out for the Division's Heartlands. Uh, you got a cinematic trailer for that. Uh, and the Division's Resurgence also. Uh, we got a you got, what did they get, a roadmap for Division 2? Yeah, so for the year 5 content, a new season, and I think a new expansion or something along those lines. Yeah. Um, I heard so, there was new Resident Evil stuff. In Division? Yeah. Another Leon skin. Are, are, you, are you going into Division? Maybe. Um... But that's not the stuff that I cared about. I cared more about the Heartland stuff, uh, which is the free-to-play PvP, PvE... Uh, survival action shooter. I liked what I saw from um, the Silver Creek, like explaining the world and things like that. To me, it seems like more division. Ultimately, mm -hmm. uh, at the end of it, they announced there's going to be a closed beta. Uh, if you sign up, you'll get five free friend codes to invite people to try it out with you. Um, I'm interested to see what Ubisoft do in the next couple of years. I'm very interested particularly in Division, to see if they do. The Division Heartland is the continuous, like, multiplayer-type game. Because, mm. like, Division is a world that's set up to kind of tell stories yeah. if they wanted to go that route. Yeah. To sort of transition um, the brand-new Division. So uh, I don't think they'll go with the Division 3. It would be Division whatever, insert subtitle. Yeah. And that just be a, sort of like a narrative experience while they have the constant multiplayer experience. And then if you get that narrative experience, like, oh, you'll get some cosmetics and some gun skins or whatever it is for the Heartland experience. I'm curious to see if they go that route with the Division. Because mm. I think if they go for, like, we're releasing Division 3, but we still have Division Heartland, like, you get into such a messy territory, especially because I think there's already... You can argue there might be a bit of a messy territory with the mobile game as well, depending on how that works out. Yeah. Um, I feel like this could very possibly go a little bit like you're spreading yourself too thin with this franchise or they could be working it to the point where it's like okay well now it's easier to put out content for this franchise without being like pigeonholed into this one thing yeah i, I mean i'm a big division fan i have to say i enjoyed the first game i enjoyed the second game the only time i don't enjoy it was it when it gets the end game i've never really enjoyed their end game stuff builds and stuff like that is oh. a bloody nightmare for me in those games just because i don't get it as i don't get it as easy as most people um but yeah, I'm a big Division fan, so I'm looking forward to anything new they put out, to be honest. New game-wise, not going back. Not yeah. going back, new game-wise. So you're not going back for the Resident Evil? Let's jump into Fix the Sack. Remember, you can email it, myxboxandmepodcast at gmail.com. Uh, first question. Uh, this one's from a while. Jami enters. Now that Clash of Creators 2 is over, I was wondering if the My Xbox and Me crew ev would ever uh, participate in a boxing match. Who uh, who would fight and who would you want to fight? By the way, did the crew watch any of the matches or see any clips? If so, which was your favourite? Fresh, did you watch any of it? Nope. No, I didn't watch any of it. I did see clips, John Morrison, and I saw Alana's clip of her winning. Um... 
I'm not really into the Clash of Creator stuff. I watch the more Misfits and stuff, the KSI and all that stuff. I watch that yeah. stuff, but I don't really watch this. Would I do it? Yes, I would. If the bag was there, I would 100% do it. But let's be well, honest, I would need a year lead up and the bag would have to be so good that, yeah. Uh, in interesting you say that. I'm pretty sure Creator Clash is for charity. <laughs> No, no, no! I'm not on about Creator Clash. I'm talking about Misfit okay, stuff. The okay, Misfit okay. stuff. I'm, I'm not doing this question specifically about uh, Creator Clash. No, I have no interest in putting my body on the line for charity. Interesting. I'd need to transform my body. Number one. Yeah. yeah like yeah. I'm a giant tub of lard. Like let's yeah. let's keep it real. Like I'd need a personal trainer. I'd need a, a chef that would what? cook me food every single day. I'd need to train they every single two times a day. Like, it would cost they too much do, money. At least with the first one. I don't know how it went with the second one. They do cover a lot of those costs. Yeah, not they, in so Misfits. They do they cover don't. the cost of training and stuff like that. But they don't pay you a bag. You do it for charity. No, no, I no. I don't know how it works with charity cost, too. I'm not getting um, beaten up. I'm not getting beaten up for, for charity. I'm sorry. I love charity. I'll do a lot of things for charity. Not, not getting, not, not getting not beaten up. Face. Not getting beaten up. <laughs> the face is worth too much. That's for me. That's for me. So... Will I do Clash of Creators 2, uh, 4, 7, 8, 9? No. But Misfits, one day, if I can get my body in the right place, I'll get there. Maybe. Okay. I need more clout, number one. Would you? Would you do it? Would I do it? Yes. But I, I think I'm very much so in somewhat of a similar place to you. I'd need to get in shape for it. And I think that'd be like the hardest hurdle to overcome over anything. Um, and then the second part... I don't know who I would fight. Because if I were to fight somebody, I can't fight somebody whose content I watch or somebody who I like or don't dislike. <laughs> Me? I have to fight somebody I'm I at, dislike. I'm actually trying to fight Greg Miller, bro. You was my idol. Now it's time we get it on. Nah, I'd have to fight someone I want to <laughs> fuck up. You know? That makes sense. That makes sense. Somebody dislike, you know? Yeah, and I don't think that's the type of... I don't think you should go into something like that for that. So it really depend, like a name coming across that just fits that right yeah um, i got you so i could see myself doing it but i also could see myself not doing it for those two reasons makes sense matt wouldn't do it i'm just confirming it here now matt would not do it there's uh, no way next there's week. no way there's no way uh next up raya says uh oh, this we should have said that because next week he's gonna be like yeah of course i would do it oh true true true, true 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 <laughs> next up Ray says uh, this might have already been covered but I've been thinking about it a lot Xbox position in the market and the PR stumble since the red full 30 FPS lock got announced I'm curious what the panel uh, what the panel's overall thoughts are on how Xbox is doing this generation what letter grade would you give them and what's the one thing you you think they could do to improve that grade oh so the Xbox Series generation. Um, Ooh, do we go harsh? I'd give them a C. I think. I think I agree with you. I'd give them a C. Um, I think if I. With Xbox, there's two different grades in my mind, right? Absolutely. But we're specifically talking about Xbox Series. I think a C. I think you're talking about Xbox. This generation, he said. It's a this generation. It's a this generation. No, no, no. I agree with you. I'm, I'm just giving. I'm Xbox including. I'm clean. No, I'm including it all. I'm including it all. Xbox, are including Game Pass and everything. I still, I give them right. a C. But I think if you just grade Game Pass on its own, it gets a much higher grade. Yeah, but that's a service. I'm, I'm, yeah, no, no, I'm, no, no. I'm packaging. I'm I, I get I'm you. To I give get you. Xbox something. You know? <laughs> but I think I'm with you. I think I'm a C, and I think a big part of that is games. Well, I think it's. I think it's a number of things. I think. <laughs> Again, I said this one on my rant when it comes to Redfall. Do not sell me a system telling me it's the most powerful system on God's given earth and then give me a game that can't run at 60 FPS. I'm sorry. That yeah. shouldn't be a thing that happens. Not only that, games, obviously. I've sat on yeah. this podcast now for... I've been doing this literally eight... Wait. Is it eight years now? This episode, eight years? Or is it in four weeks? No, it's eight. So yeah, so four weeks. weeks. So nearly eight years I've been doing this podcast. Um, and ultimately, it's been the same thing. Oh, when they get games, when they get games, when they get games. Xbox, this generation, the series generation, they launched the system. Didn't have any games. We got a year in. Haven't got any games. We get to where we're at now. 
still haven't got any games. We've got we've gotten a few here and there. I'm not I'm being a little bit hyperbolic, obviously, in what I'm saying. But they still haven't hit us with the big heavy hitters. Halo Infinite comes out. Some people like it, some people don't. Ultimately, it's multiplayer, falls on its face. Yeah. It, we're in a we're in a world right now where Xbox as a Xbox Xbox, the box itself and Xbox the brand is in a it's in an interesting position. You can give them credit for for finally getting some JRPGs in the system. We are only getting yeah. old JRPGs in the system. Um you can give them credit for buying a bunch of studios. We still are yet to see really what those studios can do because we're only getting Psychonauts 2, a game that was already in development. Redfall, a game that was already in development. Um Hi-Fi Rush, game that was already in development. We haven't really seen Xbox come out yet. It, and, and that's because it's going to take time. Yeah. Um, so I can't blame them for that, but at the end of the day, you're asking me to judge them right now, and it would, just, it would be a C for me. Yeah, I, I think I'm with you on basically all of those reasons. Because um, I don't think... I don't think Xbox has been... As bad as the Xbox One generation. Oh, obviously not. Not even close. Yeah. But Xbox has left a lot to be desired, specifically from fans. Not to say that they've left them not wanting. Like, we talk about Halo Infinite, and Halo Infinite was good. Even the multiplayer for the first week was fun until content wasn't coming out, and they didn't have enough content, right? Yeah. Um, and it's sort of like, that's just sort of the MO with a lot of what Xbox has done. It's like, it's good but it's not good enough, right? And then when you look at some of like the really big missteps, I think that drags it down a bit. Um, I think if they didn't have Game Pass, I oh. think this would be a very bad year. For, this would be a bad, very bad year, generation. bad generation. If, if they didn't have Game Pass, they'd be yeah. in big, big, big trouble. Yeah. I think, um, I, I think, I, yeah. I could see by the end of this year to like mid next year, if Starfield pans out on a lot of the other games they have coming out, that C turning very easily to B. Yeah. I they're like super far off from improving. We just need to start seeing some of those games come out. 100%. I think that's a big thing. I think also better marketing and better just messaging from Xbox on why they do certain stuff. Because like Redfall being 30 frames per second, all they said was it's 30 frames per second in a uh, high fidelity mode or whatever is coming out later. Just being more open with that stuff and not having all the marketing be 60 frames per second content and stuff like that. I think all of that helps improve uh, Xbox's grade as well. Agreed. Absolutely. Yeah. Next up, uh, Original Cookie Man. Why did it take so long for people to, set, uh, to see that Sony has no interest in improving competitive Competition, competition against itself. Sorry that the Emperor has no clothes. Wait, what? I don't get the reference. Right. <laughs> when the deal is likely you. goes through, how long do you think Xbox and how long do you think until Xbox consumers slash subscribers will see the benefit? Uh instantly. I think they proved that with um Bethesda. Bethesda's Bethesda was um, starting to yeah. started to bring stuff over before the deal was even like full. I think through. if if PlayStation weren't so um yeah, we'd start heavy on that, well. I think we would see that already. I think they'll come once this goes through, you'll see this you'll see the big image and you'll see Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, this game, that game, this game, this the this the the, the the and Game Pass is just gonna get ridiculously big. Yeah. Um I will say there is a little bit of original Cookie Man statement that bothers me. And that's the part that um, Sony has no interest in, in improving competition against itself. No company has yeah. any interest in improving competition against itself. Even Xbox, where you see Xbox being super, put air quotes around it, generous. Uh, it's because Xbox A wants this deal to go through and Xbox is... Xbox has a plan of Game Pass, and the more you can put Game Pass in different platforms, the more avenues of revenue they have. Um, so I don't think that Xbox is trying to eliminate competition against themselves as well. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. We're never going to sit up here inside. I, I, I will be the, the corporate apologist on certain things when it comes to making money, because I love money. Um, yeah. But we still have to call out bullshit. Xbox are not being... Even all the ads they're doing, bro. I'll be honest with you. I saw, I saw one in London the other day, and I was like, hmm, don't know how I feel about this. 
you don't own this company yet. Relax. Like, yeah. relax. Well, did you, oh, I didn't include the story. Did, the, did you see that they have the, yeah, the show plan, yeah. like, planned? For, uh -huh. That's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. I wonder what they have planned for that show if the deal doesn't go through. I assume it will at this point, but if it doesn't go through, I feel like they're gonna have some fire to throw by some the, way. By the way, original Cookie Man did uh, did link a uh, a, tw a tweet as well with this, and I've watched that already. And the woman's hundred percent right in what she says in the video, where it's like, "Why are we protecting industry leaders? Like, since since when is that something that we do?" Uh, here's what I will say in defense of the yeah, FTC a little bit, and it's not me going crazy in defense, but the FTC has been at odds with Microsoft as a big corporation in general in the past. And so that's where a lot of the early positioning probably comes from. Because when you look at global reach, yeah. Microsoft destroys Sony. Yeah, absolutely. It's not even like a competition. Yeah, It's when you have to look at gaming and gaming isn't an industry that they fully understand. Even the rep, I don't. The rep said something correct, but I think we talked about an article similar to this like a week or two ago where I was like, I still don't like it because I don't think they come from an informed place. I don't think this question comes from an informed place either. It's one of those things where I don't trust most government <laughs> officials talking about an industry that A is this young, but also generally their knowledge on tech, uh, technology based stuff is usually very off. But do absolutely, not, I think it's like. Do you think it would have been time. so cool if you just saw like. We're bringing in 10 of the biggest influencers. We want your opinion. <laughs> and you just see IGN, one person from IGN walk in, one person from GameSpot, one person from here, one, and they're just like, is this good or bad for the industry? And you just you do it like the end of, end of dodgeball. It's the thumbs up. You Chuck Norris. It's yeah. like, boom, boom. I think it would have been hilarious. That would have been very funny. Someone but make the skit and tag me in it, okay? <laughs> I think that would be problematic as well. Of course it I'm would. To be honest. Oh, I'm just talking shit. Yeah. yeah. Let's plug, 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 get yourself out of here. We'll do the rest of the questions next week. Crash, what you got to plug this week? Um, the My Xbox and Me YouTube page. Uh, the My, we have a podcast review. We have a podcast review. I'll leave a review for the podcast. I'm going to apologize because this podcast review came out April 3rd. Wow. It's been 20 days and I have not checked the podcast review. I have to ask you guys so many times to leave podcast reviews. So I'm very much going to apologize. Um, but leave reviews. Uh, should I read, read the review? Read the review, man. Read the review. Uh, five stars. Oh, be happy about there's that. go. From wise 42 okay uh amazing xbox podcast the title april 3rd 2023 i first started listening uh after hearing the host on the ign podcast unlocked that's me that's you and love to stake on the industry though this is an xbox podcast there is some chatter about the industry in general which is great to keep people grounded and out of the bubble but there is certainly a main focus on xbox the host, MC Fixer, is from England, and so is, I believe, one of the co-hosts, Matt P. Video. Got if not, don't hate me, Matt. He, Matt, well, Matt well, from... no, Matt, no, Matt's technically from Wales. Technically, right? Technically. But yeah. he's English. Don't worry about it, mate. You're fine. Hey, you did perfect. You're doing amazing. Keep going. Keep going. Uh, and another long-running co-host, Too Fresh Crush. He misspelled my name. <laughs> I'm going to forgive him. He spelled it with a C. Oh, come on, Crash. Come on. Now, you, you can't. Him. Five you stars and we get in a review. How dare you? We can't. They're not going to review us anymore him. if you. you... All right. All right. All right. Forget... You know what? I take back my forgiving. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you misspell my name? <laughs> uh, I did not kick my nan down the stairs to write this and Damn. apologize for not writing it sooner. Okay. But I feel now like I am part of the Potato Squad. Come on. The Potato Squad. Thank you for your. Uh, commitment to the podcast and all three of you keep up the amazing work thank you so much for the review i apologize for not getting it to it sooner uh leave a review fix is there any reviews over on your side no, no. The, you the uk don't love us i check every week the uk <laughs> do not do care really? they don't give a crap <laughs> no they don't give a crap guys make sure you review the podcast if you haven't already thank you again thank you so much for the amazing review we do appreciate it thank you for listening to us each week we're dumb idiots talking about video games and 
we just have fun with it honestly that's yeah. all we really do to be honest um remember you can follow us all at my xbox and me you can follow us all at mc fixer at crash Nick plays at matt p video we were supposed to have a minecraft uh, legends let's play go out it got uh, edited the editor did a good job on it uh we just had some audio issues we've got to figure out a way to split our audio from our mic audio you guys, I'm getting a bit in the weeds here. It doesn't really matter. It didn't come out as nice as I wanted it to, so it's not going out. But I feel like we now have the process a little bit better, and we yeah. will figure it out in the future. Um, yeah, man. Keep being amazing. Keep watching. And this week, our word of the day is sweet corn. Goodbye.